if anything did come up, you know. Thanks, mate. Well, how much do you should charge for these? What have you got there? The two large episode of Liverpool programmes and his Tamir ones. How many is there? Loads. Did he say he could sell them? No, but he never looks at them. Are you sure? Well, I've never seen them. Well, I don't think he should sell them without his permission. Why do you think he'd be upset? Upset? You chew your head off. I've still got footy programmes when I was his age. I know. I was going to ask you how much you think you should charge for them. Katie, they're part of my childhood, they are, love. Well, I thought they'd go for more because they were antiques. Not that old, you know. Come on, let's go see your granddad's. Do you think we'll need boxes? I suppose we'll be bringing things from him, not taking things to him. Well, that's what I mean, to carry things back. Why has he got loads? We well, said he had about 150 plastic carrier bags. Well, they're going to sell really well, aren't they? There's a real shortage of them. We've only got two drawers full upstairs. Well, people need them to carry away what they've bought. Listen, I've got some good stuff for you. It'll sell really well. Some of the old 60s stuff. Come on. Serious words, you know. I can go buy a serious word then. I can still talk to you, can't I? And if you can manage it without shouting at me. I shouted at you because I was upset. Oh, you were upset, and I didn't get to think of me. I was thinking of both of us. Come on, have your word then. How are you feeling? Great, thanks. How about you? Pretty stupid, I suppose. Anyway, look, I'm not interested in how I feel. How are you? I told you. Great. No, I mean seriously, Tracy. Yes, yeah. so do I. You didn't get pregnant on your own, you know. No, but I ended up having the abortion on my own, didn't I? Because you didn't love me enough to stand by me. Maybe I never thought about it like that. Well, maybe you should have tried. Well, maybe I'm trying now. Yeah, well, maybe it's too late now. Look, I'm just saying it felt like part of me being... Being what? Being murdered? I don't know, being lost. Is that what you wanted to say? Oh, I don't know what I want to say. I mean, every time I open my mouth, you put me down, don't you? I didn't want you to lose the baby, but you did. I didn't lose it, Barry. I got rid of it. I didn't want you to finish with me, but you did. No, you didn't want me to get pregnant either, but I did. How do you know I didn't? Because if you did, you never mentioned it once. Look, we made a mistake, all right, and we're paying for it now. Just because I didn't agree with you didn't mean you had to finish it. You called me all kinds for having it done. You hated me, and I'm supposed to live with that, am I? Well, that was then, not now. You hated me once, Barry, that's enough. You can't carry on after someone's done that. I hated what you were doing, not you. Come round and talk about the baby. It wasn't a baby. Can you just let me finish what I'm saying? Look, I know it hasn't been easy for you. Yourself? Look, it's been hard for me as well, you know. Oh, will you stop giving me all the Catholic stuff your mum's been feeding me? I'm not me, man. I'm the fellow who gave you the baby, aren't I? When I was holding you, when I was kissing you, when I was loving you. I came down to see you. Because I'm missing you. Not because I want to put you in the dock and start judging you. I just want to know if there's any chance for us. No chance.
Charlie, I'll still be thinking about you. I mean, if there's anything... I'm not going to give up, you know. Got a job on? Got a cob on more, like. Taking up brain surgery, are you? The fellas I'm gonna see are gonna need more than brain surgery when I'm finished with them. I've got all my gear locked in that shop and I've had enough of waiting. What are these for, then? So everything can have a little sticky label for anyone who might be too embarrassed to ask for the price. You're getting into it in a big way, aren't you? It's just common sense, really. Well, if there was more of that in the world, love, there'd be less bad news on the telly, wouldn't it? Anyway, you should be making a big sign, showing everyone where the money's going to, you know, for a good cause and that. Have someone already? Let's see it then. You can't, because it's a surprise. If everyone sees what it's for, they won't come on and they see what it's about, will they? I can't teach you anything, can I? You probably will one day. Thanks, Einstein. I'll let you know when it happens, all right? Come along, chauffeur, we're going to be late. I'll show for you in a minute. Jimmy, then. He's done one, hasn't he? I found Kath. She hasn't seen him since last night. Yeah, well, no one's seen him. She's going frantic. She doesn't know whether to go out looking for him or stay at home in case he turns up. Oh, and what's she going to do if she finds him? Uh, stick a muzzle on him or something, eh? Same as you're going to do if he comes back here. Oh, I must that? Well, you could try sitting on him for a start so he can't run out causing havoc. And while you've got him down there, you could try knocking seven kinds of sense into him. Yeah? Well, I'm not sure he's wrong, though, am I? You what? You're talking about a fight that was over and done with and finished years ago. No, I'm talking about a fight that was started years ago. It's not over, though, is it? Not yet, no. <laughs> Look, I know you both have been bottling things up over the years, but you can't just explode the minute this bloke comes back on the scene. And why not? Because you've got more sense. If I had any sense, I'd be out there with our Jimmy, trying to find this fella and get it all out of me system. Your Frankie was older than you and Jimmy. Used to keep you out of trouble, make you toe the line, right? Yeah, and we back him up if we needed the numbers, yeah. I know you both lost your older brother, but at least Jimmy's still got you. At least he's still got you to look after him. He's still got you to keep him in line and out of trouble. Yeah, that's all right for him, isn't it? He's sorted out, isn't he? But what about me? Who have I got to look up to? Who have I got to keep me out of trouble? I've only got myself, haven't I, eh? I'm going into town. It's a bit late in the day for that, isn't it? I'm going for a pizza with Nicky. What's wrong with having your tea here? Nothing, I just feel like spending some of my money. I know the feeling. Spend some for me. See you then. Ben. Hi, right, sir. What happened to you? I squatted on, didn't I? Did you hear? Funny tattle, what happened? Under the sink. Only cotton wool. You being sponsored to say nothing, sir. What happens? Well, I went to the shop, didn't I? Trying to get my gear out. And the squatter squatted on me. Having a bit of a clear out, sir. On me safe. You got a big sign, love. It's gonna take some selling this. Oh, go to fast for nothing like this. No room to store here, you know. Oh, but you enough for a bargain. Oh, look at that. It's still on the rubber seal. John Dad never gave us a rubber seal, did he? The rubber seal on the boot of the car. Oh. Look at this, it's dripping oil everywhere. Mind the paint work, love. 
started. Oh. Ah! Big finger! What's it doing? Oh. It's better be for a good cause, this. That's what we're selling, mate. Remember that little lad that lived here? Little Danny Sullivan. Well, he's not mine, is he? You joking? No, I'm not joking. You know why little Danny Sullivan's not mine? Because big Terry Sullivan can't have kids, can he? So we're we safe. Why? Think they should be bothered. Have you kicked them out? Of course I have. Yeah, we've done the right thing then, haven't you? Are you sure about not having kids? I loved that kid, you know, mate. I loved him like he was my own, didn't I? I know he did, sir. I thought I was going to kill her as well. Yeah, what are you doing? I'd have you right too, wouldn't you? Oh, I came close. I came really close. Terry, I'd have done the same, anyone would. <laughs> Me, though, soft-hearted Terry. You gonna see Danny again? Four. Got nothing to do with me now, has he? I hit her and all, you know. <laughs> Did she admit it? Not at first. But she did in the end. But she deserved it then, didn't she? You don't hit women, no, do you? Sally, don't worry about it, and she deserved it. Oh, I really loved her, you know. And when you love someone like that, you think you can trust them, can't you? And, and they turn around and they've been lying in your face all the time. What's going to happen to little Danny, sir? He's going to grow up, isn't he, without the man who loves him the most in the world. And the worst thing is, I'm missing him already. Bound to, aren't you? If I see him again, if I ever did see him again, it would crucify me. He's got the chance to hold on, Terry. Even if he wasn't yours, he doesn't know that, does he? All he knows is that you love the bones of him. Now you're not there. Not like me. Never even got the chance to speak up for mine. Till he was going out of nothing. For a few weeks, next thing, bang. He's gone. Oh there. Could have been a little girl. Never know now, will I? Tracy. Who else? I haven't seen her looking ill. I haven't seen her laid up or anything. Well, you won't, will you? Because she's hard. Because she wants to make it seem like she just missed a bus or something, sir. I suppose it makes it easier for her. I want to say I'm sorry. But it doesn't sound enough, does it? That's enough about me, sir. I say I'm really sorry about, about what's happened about Danny and everything. I mean it. All right. I didn't come round here looking for sympathy. You got enough of your own worries. Well, I can't understand is how he thinks he could get away with it. That's the last thing he's thinking of. All he wants to do is get out there and tear the fellow apart. And get locked up himself for the rest of his life. 
The way I was brought up, Sheila, to look after your own, because there was always someone waiting for you around the corner. And whatever you had, they'd take it off you. If it was sweets, it, it was sweets. If it was money, it, it was money. And if they tried to take the sweets or the money off your kid brother, you stood by him and you saved him. He, he didn't run away, he didn't go hiding in corners, and you didn't turn the other cheek like one of your saints might have done. Well, we'll ignore that one, shall we? No, hang on. You either kicked him, you stuck one on him, or you nutted him. Otherwise, he'd keep coming back, wouldn't he? Well, this fellow's out of jail now, and our Jimmy sees it as his chance of getting one good kick back in. He's not threatening to get a good kick in, though. He's threatening to kill him. You can't blame him for that, can you? It's all he knows. It was the way he was brought up. You're not exactly throwing yourself under a bus to stop him either, are you? Because I was brought up the same way, wasn't I? <laughs> oh, come on, Billy. We all went to the school of hard knocks. How do you think I feel, Sheila? You know, in here. How many nightmares do you think I had before they caught him? How many nights do you think I sat awake waiting for him to come after me before I went after him? Everyone used to go on about how hard the cork hills were, Sheila. But look at me, look at me. I'm sat here on me fat bum. Well, that no mark is walking around, breathing the air. Our Frankie never lived to breathe. <laughs> how am I supposed to be when I see him standing there in front of me, laughing at me? This fella killed me brother. You haven't got a monopoly on grief, you know. Who said I had? Hey, look at me, I've been the mother of four kids, haven't I? How many times do you think I said, if anyone touches any of my kids, I'd kill them? I'd worry about it later, but I'd kill him. What did I do when our Damon died? I cried. And then I stopped crying and I got on with it. I got on with my life. What do you think I've been doing since Frankie got killed? Same as me, living with it. Well, I don't have to live with it anymore, do I? I mean, you can live with it with yourself for Damon. I mean, you manage that all right, don't you? <laughs> I do not manage it all right. I ate it. I don't go around with it written across my forehead, but it's all going on inside here. It won't go away. No matter how many walls I build, no matter how much I try and fill my mind with other things, it's still going on. The loss of that kid will not leave me alone. But you've got to get up in the morning, haven't you? You've got to go shopping. I mean, you can't let all the pain you're feeling inside come bursting out by the baked bean stand in Tesco's, can you? But, but there's still someone walking around there, you know, uh, as free as anything, and, and they killed your son, and that's wrong, that, isn't it? You don't have to tell me it's wrong. But we're not living in the Wild West. We've got laws, we've got the police. <laughs> the police? They, they haven't found no one yet. They, what you today, you can't expect them to sort things out for you. They found your Frankie's killer. He's paid his price. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's been behind bars for years. It's not life, though, is it? I mean, he should do life for murder, shouldn't you? I mean, if the law goes soft on him, it's up to people like me and our Jimmy to sort it out, isn't it? You can't do that. And why not? You can't take the law into your own hands by yourself like that. You can't. And why not? <laughs> because you just can't. You make yourself as bad as the scum who took your brother's life away in the first place. Like, what would you do if the fellow who killed your daemon came and stood in front of you right now? Well, that's really going to happen, isn't it? No, no, don't back out of it. I'm not backing out. It's not worth thinking about because it's not going to happen. If he was stood in front of you right now, what would you do? I'd want to kill him. There you go. That's how I feel, isn't I said it? I'd want to kill him. I didn't say I would kill him. But you feel exactly the same way as me, though, don't yes. you? Yes! You want to put him through the same pain as he put your lad through. But I'd still be causing that pain to somebody else, wouldn't I? To his wife, or his kids, or his mother, or whoever. I mean, if I killed him, his pain would last a minute, wouldn't it? Because he'd be dead. But their pain? Well... Theirs would last as long as mine, and I think mine's growing inside me so much, I don't think it's even started hurting yet. I feel... I feel like when I'm old and grey and sitting in my rocking chair in the window, I'll still be waiting for him to walk up the path, I'll still be waiting for him to come through the door, I'll, I'll still be waiting for him to bring his bag of dirty washing round. That's how I feel. I mean, how you see lads around his age in the street wearing the Liverpool scarves. Sometimes I thought, oh God, it's him, it's Damon. And afterwards, you know, it's only your mind playing tricks because you so wanted it to be him, so desperately wanted it to be him.
when the news came on after Hillsborough. I sat up upstairs on the edge of the bath and I cried for hours. I <laughs> couldn't cry enough tears that day. And I know half of them are for our Damon because if he'd been alive, he'd still have been there. I know he died a stupid death, but at least he was spared the tragedy those other families had to go through. When we went to Anfield and we walked past the cop, there were all those flowers and scarves and things. I could see him standing there. He pointed out his speck to me so many times on match of the day. And I thought, well, he might have died a long way from home. I mean, he might have died a long way from his mates. But at least he's got a few around him now, at least. Got a few of the lads he can share his stories with. At least he's not on his own anymore. You've just got to accept it. It's happened. You loved them dry and now they've gone. And you're either just going to kill yourself, aren't you, or are you? gonna get on with it. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. You gonna sort them out, Terry? Who? Whoever Danny's real half fellow is. You tell me who he is and then I will. What happened to your window? I put a milk bottle through it. Doesn't bear thinking about, you know. What? Well, I'm just trying to think. He was always all over Danny. Buying him toys. Feeding him. Changing his nappy. Fill the blanks in, will you, Barry? My brain's not working. He treated him like he was his own, Terry. But it still doesn't bear thinking about. Who? Jonathan. Next, and firefighters struggle to save two dogs stuck on a cliff near a busy freeway. Side, it was on those back of the room. He's in Ronzi. 
Yeah, look, I was going to have you ask you a favour, mate, if you don't mind. Well, what I'm asking is that. Well, I've got to go round to Josie's. Well, she should have been coming round here, but she's not here, is she? So I'll keep an eye out for me, and if you see her, tell her to hang on, cos I've gone round to hers. I won't see her. Well, you might do, you know, out the window anyway. I won't see her, all right. Well, I've got this message that she's coming round, and I'm not going to be here, am I? Well, that's just tough, isn't it? Cos I mightn't be here either. All right, all right. I just thought that as you were uh, busy redecking it, you know, you might be here for a while. That's all. I need to chew my ear off. There's no need for you to come round here poking your nose into other people's business, is there? All right, then. No need to chew my nose off. I'm not redecorating, all right? You're not exactly baking a cake, are you? It says, look at the state. And you should put something down on the carpet, you know. Hey, are you in the right state for doing this? Yeah, I am. Are you sure? There's a look as though I'm not sure. Here, get rid of that, will you? It says. Here, is that all right for you? Hey, hey. Oh, look, you're down to big holes in the plasterboard now. You just make them all work for yourself. Do I look as though I care? Hey. What's that, Tess? Look, do you want me to come back after you've had the brain surgery? What's the problem? Oh, your little Leo and your little Jenna. I know you've half split up from them, but you love them, don't you? Of course I do. You love them because they're yours, don't you? Well, what else? You know they're yours, don't you? Of course I know the man. How? Well, because they are, that's why. Prove it. Oh, don't be soft, Tess. You can, can you? You've only got a word for it. Well, of course they're mine. Oh, like little Danny's mine? Yeah, that's right. Well, I've got news for you. Little Danny isn't mine. And my wife's a lying two-faced slag. And if she can do it, so can yours. I'm sorry, mate. You couldn't be sorry enough if you cried for the rest of your life. Come over and talk about it, you know, if you want to. Well, I just thought I'd put it in the echo so everybody would know about it. I can't even walk down that street now without everyone laughing at me and pointing. Hey, you want to do that? Might as well just stick a big red nose on me face. Might like she's made a big enough clown out of me. Come on, Tess. No one's going to laugh. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Haven't you got to go to Josie's? Yeah. I'm late now. Do you want to call around after? Nah. I'll be all right, mate. You go and spend some time with your kids. I know how much they mean to you. Only if you're sure. How many people do you think have said to me, little Danny looks just like me, eh? How many? Yeah, I left my name with Tony. Yeah, that's oh, no problem. I've done loads of it. Who's that, love? Tony's mate, Daly from the band. OK, mate, yeah. I'll wait for your call, then. Yeah. Cheers, thanks. Yes! Got a job, got a job, got a job. Frank, you're never going back with the band. Not playing, just loading, unloading that. Like a roadie, you mean? Yeah, mad Frank, the roadie. Spend you this, just like your mother. Oh, Frank! Oh, you're so bad. Yeah, I'm warning you. Oh, it's your father, Oh, don't you dare! 
Did I ever tell you about your first date with your oh, mum? No. Hey, but she looked dead smart, loads of makeup. The only trouble was she put on a dimly lit room, right? Looked like she trowelled it on. No, I didn't. It looked like the Red Indian. No, I did not. All my mates were going, whoa, 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 whoa. Where were you? You come with a long ranger for ages after that. <laughs> and your mother chunts her. Oh, you... <laughs> oh, Frank, don't. What? <laughs> oh, the people will be coming around to see the choice any minute. Frank, you know. It must have been great growing up in the old days, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, he got out just in time, didn't he? You son of Jimmy. How are you expecting him handcuffed to the back of a police car and an ambulance? Yeah, well, he's got his head together a bit now. I had a long talk with him and he's not as wound up as he was, like... Oh, God, does he think he's going to do going round, getting revenge on people? He doesn't see it like that, love, you see? How oh, Jimmy worshipped Frankie. Then this fella, Gordon, comes along and bang, out of the blue, we haven't got a big brother anymore. Anyway, it'd be all right, he'd just be late or something. If he was on time for the change, I'd be worried he was sick. Look, Dad, I'm sorry for all this. Abortion stuff's been cut in between you and Sheila. Big decision for you, that one, I love. I could say that, yeah. You have to make more of them the older you get. As long as you're still there so I can get some advice off you. I'll always be here for you, you know that, don't you? Not if you go missing for ten years. How's that gonna happen? Look, Dad, I just... I just don't want you waking up one morning and deciding you're going to go after this fella. It's me trying to talk to Jimmy out of all this, isn't it? Yeah, no, but that doesn't mean you're not being enough inside to go after him. I can see it in you now. Yeah, well, I can't explain it, love, can I? You know, it's just, uh, it's just... Well, it just fills your head up. You know, and every time I try and eat something, I feel as though I'm going to choke on it. What would you do if you just let go and went after him? If he was stood in front of me now? I couldn't stop myself. I'd just tear him apart, wouldn't I? He's still 11 years locked up, though. I don't want the same thing happening to you. I just couldn't handle it, Dad. That'll be Nicky for me. Look, I've already lost my mum. I know I'll give you a bad time on that, but I don't want to lose you and all. OK? Yeah. Frank, I'm trying to sell a house to these people. They might come in here for a cup of tea. Could at least put your shirt on. Not veggies, are they? Could have seen raw meat before. I think these people are really interested in the house. They've been to see it twice now. There's enough of a mess outside there without them looking at the sight of you. Shouldn't move here, should they? We don't accept us for what we are. Do you want to buy a sunbed? Do you want to know a secret? A real one? Yeah, a real good one. Only you've got to promise not to tell Anthony. Why? What's happened? Well, he's had a quiet word to me, a very quiet word. Yeah, come on, tell us. And he's opening his own salon, isn't he? He's not. He is, he told me. Well, where's he getting the money from for that? I never asked. Oh, no, I bet you we end up with a new boss. Well, it depends, doesn't it? Oh, we're going to get some randy pants, aren't we? It depends whether we go with Anthony or not. Well, it'd be nice if we got asked first, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I might be in a position to fix you up there. Oh, why? And what have you been scheming? Well, he's already asked me to go with him and be his top stylist. He hasn't. He hasn't. Oh, brilliant. God, yeah. Well, Bant needs someone to sweep the floors, are not we? Hey, I'll sweep the ceiling for you, girl. I'm telling you. Are you sure you can fix me up? Yes, yeah, sound. Anyway, he's asked me to uh, interview new staff, hasn't he, Miss White? Mm. <laughs> oh, it'd be nice to go somewhere, wouldn't it? Getting all in a summery mood. I'd like to go to Sweden, see the fjords and things. That's Norway fjords. No. I'd like to go to New York and myself and see all the Swedish birds. Oh, behave, will you? <laughs> now, I'd really like to go to Africa, though. Be on one of them balloon safaris. Wouldn't it be brilliant floating over all the elephants and rhinos and everything? Oh, have you got a few quid, like? Well, I've got a pound. That wouldn't even get us in the safari <laughs> park. You should have paid for that. You were going to read them. We're only looking at the pictures. Are you looking at the store while I go and get a drink? What, well, in case it's a big mad rush, Katie, yeah? Yeah. Don't let me dad see that sign, though, will you? Go on, then. What's this, then? You can read, can't you? Better than I can walk, like. Yet. I thought you wanted a decent job, not hotel work. Well, a job's a job these days, isn't it? They seem pretty keen, don't they? 
I must have put a good application form in. Yeah, well, it's a good start for me to earn some money. Give me a chance to get away from the wrinklies for a bit. Is the money good? Well, no job is to start off with, is it? Be more than what I'm getting. What do you mean? Well, I'll be at college, won't I? I'm not exactly going to have money to burn. And you and all your new mates from your job, you'll all be chock with cash. I won't. And I'll be stuck in the house bored off my cake while you're on your training courses. That's for only two weeks at the start. Oh, why? I had a mate once, Dello. He started off in the kitchens. A week later, he was behind the bar. And two weeks after that, he was down south for ages, catering for all them fancy garden parties and fates and all that stuff. Oh, yeah? Well, I won't be, will I? Yeah, well, I'm not into being a long-distance lover, Sammy. So I don't see why you don't just stop now and give us all a break. Look, I haven't even had the interview yet. Well, if they offer it to you and you come to me and ask me whether or not I think you should take it, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I'll tell you to tell them to stick it. So I don't see why you don't just do that now to save all the bother. And why don't you just keep your nose out all right? Where are you going now? Oh, I'm going inside to practice making beds. Hey, listen. You reckon we should tell Terry the busies have been round? Why don't you keep your nose out of everyone's business? Yeah. Yeah, the latest. Drop the bomb, have they? Them squatters have only got the busies on me. How did they know where you were? Well, I had to give me address to the building supplies. So he got it off the invoices, didn't he? We well, shouldn't have opened the door, should you? Well, I thought it might be someone for you, you know. <laughs> Meaning so. Well, you know, anyone, like. <laughs> she won't be showing her face around here again. So anyway, Terry, what do you reckon to that, like? These little gets like that getting the busies on me. I wouldn't mind, but I can't even get a nail out of there. They got all my stuff in there. You're making complaints against me. Now I'm gonna have to make a statement and everything. Well, just tell them you're in the right. <laughs> oh, I yeah, am. They start looking back through the files. And who did he find smiling up at them? Grant's he had the ball. Teddy, there was five of them. I got battered and they're doing me for assault. Yeah, well, you know what you should have done, don't you? Teddy, they cost me a bomb. You should have given the legs a good kick and then they wouldn't have been able to go run towards the busies, would they, eh? Next time they start saying that you come and get me, all right? What am I doing, eh? What am I doing this for? It's not even my house, is it? What did I throw her out for, eh? It's his house, isn't it? She should be living here with him. And here's me redecorating his house for him, eh? I'm out on the streets, me, aren't I? She's just coming now. Sorry, can't see anything I'm in need of. You can make a contribution if you like. It's for the environment. Oh, OK. Let's have a look. Uh, you don't take visa, do you? Cash only, Mum said. Got any change? I haven't, no. Nobody's been all this. Nobody's bought anything. Hmm. Well, you better take that, then. Make up for the bad day. Are you sure? Sure, why not? Good course, isn't it? You can have all your peace for that, if you like. No, honestly, I prefer you keep them. I might find somebody else to buy them. Hurry up, Max. Can I'm going to be late for work. You, you might try one of the museums in town. Hiya. Was everything all right? I'm fine, thanks. Um, this is my husband, Frank. This is Mr. Farnham. Nice to meet you. Hello. Thanks for the guided tour. Oh, all right. Would you like to pop in for a cup of tea? Yeah, I think Patricia would prefer to get off, if you don't mind. Oh, all right. Does that mean you're not interested, then? Oh, no, not at all. We're going to make a definite offer. Oh, great. Not necessarily at the asking price, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll be off. See ya. Bye. Oh, they seem nice, don't they? So every day you get the chance to vet your new neighbours, you know. Oh, sounds painful, that. Huh? Tell you what, though, I wouldn't mind vetting her. Hey, you. They've obviously got a new baby. And it sounds like they've got an older girl as well. She doesn't seem near old enough to have a teenager, though, does she? Might be years. Yeah. I've actually kept a face and a figure far better than I have. Now we all spread sideways the older we go. Oh, not you. The trivial for drain pipe, you. And hey, when I say I'm losing my face and my figure, you're supposed to say, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, I'm not what? Losing your marbles. Yeah. I'll see to you later. Look, I'm going to check they've locked up properly. I don't want any more uninvited guests, do we? Did he buy anything, love? No, but he gave me ten pounds of donation. Did he? Oh, brilliant. Great. Listen, I still haven't seen your sign, you know. It's for the environment. That's what I told Mr Farnham. Come on, let's have a look at it, then. Come on. 
Never told the proper truth. And what's the proper truth? Ah, oh, Katie, love. I wanted to try and raise some money to get Granddad's grave fixed. Oh, when you say. I wanted to be a surprise. So do you offer to give me it back? No. If it was some little old lady, maybe. Are you sure? Yeah. Anyway, I think cleaning gravestones can be classed as improving the environment, don't you? Hey, apart from that, you wouldn't give it to you if you couldn't afford it. Well, where's Jonathan? Loads of money. And we'd look good in the carry out, wouldn't he? <laughs> It'll be all right. Should have been here ages ago, though. He'll turn up. At least if he was here, I'd know where he was, and then I could keep my eye on him. He'll turn up. He always does. Well, you watch yourself. There's broken glass still down there. Oh, he's probably doing a deal somewhere in some alehouse, I suppose, eh? Look, he's probably still in the betting shop. Well, the last race will be over by now. Worrying about him is not going to get him here any quicker, is it, eh? He could be anywhere, though. I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, he could be down the dock road, buried in a skip somewhere. Right, I'm off then. What's up with you? See, Big Daddy's back then, eh? Well, do you want me to stay around, Nancy? No, it's all right. I can handle it. I want to give him a kick as much as you, you know. Oh, no, you don't. Not by miles. You know, just make sure he doesn't get one in first. You hear me tell you? He's done that already, hasn't he? We'll have to get some models, you know, and some good photographs for publicity. Well, our Kevin's got this mate, right, who had an art exhibition, and he went to our college and everything. He's brilliant. Hello? Yeah, hang on a minute. Dad? Phone? Come in. We'll have to look at some of his stuff first, you know, check him out, and yeah. that. Who is it? I don't know, they sound dead posh. They're asking Mr. William Corkill. Well, he took me on Hello, to a yeah? shoot once, and he's gorgeous. Did he have a flash car? No, he took me in a donkey car. Look, can you keep what it do down, you, you two, just for a minute, all right? Well, go ahead, what's wrong? Is he all right? Oh, Jimmy's had his head kicked in. He's alive, though, isn't he? Hiya. Time job, is it? Whatever you've come for, I've burnt it. You burnt what? Anything of Sue's, anything of the babies. I've burnt the lot. All right. Uh, you lost me. I just <laughs> want to see Sue. <laughs> You're a hard face get, aren't you, eh? <laughs> Why? What have I said? There's a garden full of ashes and dust out the back there. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's Sue, and you can tell her. Tell her what? Tell her that the old world knows now, and they're all having a good laugh. All right. Uh, Terry, look, I've been ringing you. There's been no answer at all. Why? Couldn't you speak to her in work, eh? No, she's not been in work. That's the problem. That's your problem, you mean, don't you? You haven't got your secretary sitting there all cosy on the boss's knee, have you? Well, look, look, besides whatever the hell it is you're talking about, I'm talking about needing to know if I've got to get a temp in. I've come back from London, she's not even been near the office, she's not even phoned in. So if she's sick or something, just, uh, just tell me and I'll get back to work. Well, why don't you ask her if you've got to get a temp in, eh? You got a temporary father in, didn't you, eh? Huh? Just long enough to keep your little secret boxed off. A temporary father, paying all the bills, working my heart out for that little guest. Didn't stop you going on your fancy trips, though, did it, eh? Hey, hey. Terry. She told me. She told me, you know. She told me that my little Danny... He isn't my little Danny, is he? She told you he was mine? What the hell was that for? That was for me, mate, all right? Well, whatever it is, it's between me and him, so you just keep out of it, all right? You tell him yourself, me, Terry! You tell him! You tell him he's your mate! Sir. You was the other one who kept coming around buying him presents, aren't you, then? Yeah, because I wanted a kid of my own. You knew that! You're the one who put the smile back on her face, aren't you, eh? Hey? Listen! Listen to me! I came to see Daniel because Cheryl didn't want kids! I was jealous of you, for God's sake! I've never touched you in my life! I've never been near her! Well, somebody have, haven't you? Well, not me! Honest! Believe me. This is doing my head in. She didn't tell you it was mine, did she? I can't believe she did. She didn't, did she? Well, who did then, Terry? 
I just wanted a kid with Cheryl. That's all I wanted. I wanted a kid I could call my own. That's all I wanted. Who told you? Him? What's going on? Hey, this isn't right, is it? I only wanted another baby because I loved him so much. If we'd stuck to one, I never would have found out, would I? I... Look what she's done to me. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. And the worst thing's the baby, isn't it? He's not even a year old yet. But he knows me, you know. He doesn't know what love is, but he loves me. He's gonna be sitting there, isn't he? Wondering where I am, why I've abandoned him. I come home now and there's no more little smiles for me, is there? No more little tears to wipe away. I come home and the house is empty. It's like being dead. It's just like being dead, mate. Finished having a good look, have you, eh? Swear to me, he's not yours. He's not mine, I swear on my life. Well, whose is he, then? Whose is he? Why don't you just work it out for yourself, Terry? Just work it out instead of listening to your so-called mate. You knew, didn't you? You knew all that time. How come I'm the last to find out, eh? Well, if you've known all that time, it might as well be yours. Oh, no! Don't you start blaming me. It wasn't me that let her go off with one of her old boyfriends on Christmas Eve, was it? If you want to kill anyone, it's him. A dog stranded in a sinking boat next. Tales of animals in peril in Animal Rescue. After the break. What's going on, Josie? You gotta take the kids for a couple of weeks. You what? Go on. Come on, you two are gonna be late. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. If you're supposed to be there for nine o'clock, that's when you're supposed to be there. Katie, do you want a boiled egg? Please, that's two minutes. Okay, I'll set the stopwatch. Sam, you're ready to go. All right, Dad, don't panic. It's the end of term. No one's bothered whether we go in or not. Never mind being a bit late. I'm bothered, and your mother's bothered, and she'll ask me if you got there on time. How oh, come on, Jeff's always early for school? Because he plays football before it starts, and anyway, I'm a six former now. It's all relative. My football? No telling that expands on universe. What do you know? I only asked her if she wants the boiled egg. You've been talking about it in science with Mr Molyneux. Oh, he's really weird, him. I think he's an alien. You don't know, of course I do. He's definitely not from this planet. Have you checked his little finger? Little finger? Yeah, the invaders. He's great. His first name's Steve and he goes scuba diving. Oh, I told you he was weird. He isn't. Oh, has my little sister got a crush on Steve Molyneux? I have not. I've been trying to find you. Yeah, and I've been returning your calls. 
But as usual, you're never where you should be. Anyway, we found each other now, so that's all right. I can't stop. And where are you swan enough to know? <coughs> hey, Neil, be careful, son. And don't be messing. Shouldn't he be at school? You'll have to take him. Hey, listen here, you. Gemma, go and find your brother. I think your dad's going to lose his temper. Josie. You've got to have them from this time to about five every day for the next week or so. Oh, have I now? And where are you going to be then? In court. Oh, yeah. And what the hell have you been up to now? And why are you all dressed up first thing in the morning? I want to look my best for the judge. Don't play that, babe. Look, they've had their breakfast, Gemma's brought some toys with her, and Leo's going to be late if you don't leave in the next five minutes. Hang on a minute, lady. It's a long time since you called me that, Mick. Yeah, I meant the term loosely. So what's the story? Can I stay off school, Dad? No, you can't, son. I've got a living to earn. Someone's got to pay for your mother's fancy oh. clothes. Don't worry about me, kid. You didn't pay for this. It's out of your league. Where's your mother going, Leo? Sending people to jail. Unless she knows them. For what? Yeah. Jory service. You? Yeah, me. Why not me? Must be scraping the barrel. You've never been on jury service, have you? No, I haven't. Hmm. All right, all right. So for once you've got a legit reason for dropping the kids on me. But why don't you give me more notice? Because I couldn't find you. But I think I've given you about twice as much notice as you gave us before you walked out. How am I going to work? Hard. Must go. The British legal system's waiting for me so we can get into gear. Here's a kiss. Mm. Don't worry about behaving yourself for your dad, kids. Enjoy yourselves. Ta-da! Have you really had your breakfast? Yeah. Crisps and pop. Crisps and pop? That's all she needs first thing. Is that right? <laughs> Come on, let's go and find something decent. Can I stay off school, Dad? No, you can't. Mum said? Yeah, Mum would, wouldn't she? Who's left the lid off the coffee jar? It'll be our Jeff. Oh, it would be, wouldn't it? Seeing he's the only one not here. Does it really matter, Dad, in the grand scheme of things? What are you going on about? A thousand million stars in the Milky Way. Does it really matter about leaving the lid off one coffee jar? Yes, it does matter. And it matters about radios being left on when nobody's listening to them, and lights on in empty rooms, and hot water taps left running, and all sorts of things I can't think of at the moment. That's you leaving the hot taps running. You that's supposed to care so much about the environment and not wasting Earth's natural resources. I never waste water. Oh, you mean you never get a bath? I'm cleaner than you. Katie, butter the toast. Mr. Marnie says he has to go to Wales, Scotland, or the lake just to do any diving. The rivers and all that round here are filthy. Then why don't you clean one up for him, then, Miss Environment? And he wouldn't have to travel so far. Will you two stop fighting? I have to do a green project for science. Me, Jenny, she won't go clean up the river just over the bridge. It's not too far for Mr. Marnie to inspect it. I'll take some pictures before we start. Can I borrow your camera tonight, Dad? We'll see. How old is this, Mr. Molyneux? Ancient. 22. 23 on the 14th of October. 22? Do you have teachers that young? Of course they do. I think people worry too much about age. Yeah, well, you'll always be 10 years older than you, little sister. 22? What can he know, 22? He knows loads. He's been to college, you know, Dad, and he's always reading dead posh books about the universe and that. He maybe understand about reincarnation, even. Oh, he's really weird. <laughs> Teaches religious studies, does he? No, he's an atheist. What's that got to do with reincarnation? With the universe expanding. Well, I hope he's got planning permission or Harry Cross will try and stop it. With the universe expanding, it'll one day reach its limit and start to contract. Yeah, and will you have gone to school by then, do you think? It'll be in about 6,000 million years, according to Mr Molyneux. That's when it'll start to contract and rush into itself. Back to the Big Bang, what started it all. And what else that got to do with reincarnation? It's simple. Simple? Time will run backwards, so we'll all come back as ourselves. And will we have to have this conversation again in 6,000 million years? 12,000. 6,000 million there and 6,000 million back. It's great. You don't have to worry about death because you keep on coming back as yourself. I wonder if you have to pay back your insurance policies, but on the return trip, going backwards, start off young when you get older. Yeah, and we'll all have to be walking backwards and everything. All be bumping into each other. And you'll know the endings to all the books and the telly programmes. I know what you got for your birthday before it even happened. All right, you can laugh. Mr. Moyne says there's no no, and what speeds will go back. If it's locked fast, we won't have time to notice. We'll just notice when we're going forwards again. After the Big Bang? Yeah. It's not quite worked it all out yet. These eggs are boiled. Why don't you go to school and get my hand? Okay. I'm only taking lessons from Little Woods, love. But if it were true, 
You'd remember from the first time round, wouldn't you? That you'd been here before. Dad. I'll open it then. It's private. Got something to hide, have you? Can you two stop bickering? I've got a big decision to make here. What is it? Whether to take a top of the range Volvo or 50 quid a week for life. I thought you had to win the competition first. I'm in the third round already. I haven't done anything yet. Yeah, but Dad, if you won the car, you'd only be worrying about driving it backwards in 12,000 million years. Ha, ha, ha. School, the pair of you. Excuse me, love, can you tell us uh, yeah. which room Jimmy Cork was in, please? Yeah, it's just through there. In that one, here. Yeah. How are you doing, mate? Great. On top of the world, never better. Four broken ribs, so every time I cough or sneeze, I feel like I'm being knifed. Severe bruising to the groin and legs, so I have to lie in this bed and use a bedpan. One brother dead, and the other not giving two sucks about any of it. And Joey Godden walking round town, laughing at us. I'm over the moon, mate. Look, I do care. Why do you think I'm here, eh? Yeah, I've got you some of these. Probably to ease your guilty conscience. Yeah, well, I'm not going to let you get away with it that easy, Billy. We both promised. At our Frank's funeral, we promised him that we'd sort out that Joey Godden. And you've let Frank and me down, haven't you, Billy? You've let the family down and all. Yeah, well, I've got a new family now, and I didn't let them down, did I? Come on, Jimmy, it was a long time ago. The fella served his time. For God's sake, our Frankie was no saint, and you know it. Frankie was our big brother. He looked after us. Or have you forgotten that, hey? Of course I haven't. But what's the point of us going to jail for the sake of revenging him, eh? Oh, no. That's what it's all about, Billy. He's out there laughing at us, and I'm in here hurting. Not just because of what they did to me, but because of what you did to me as well. You really let me down, Billy. You've hurt me as much as them. Well, I thought I had to do the right thing, right? At the graveside, it seemed like the right thing to promise to sort God out. But not now. Time moves on, people change, you know. You're a coward, Billy. All talk. But when it came down to doing something, you bottled out. I don't want to fall out with you, all right? Oh, don't you? Well, it's too late for that now, isn't it? You let me down when I need you the most. Yeah? Well, I'm going to be carry on like this, OK? All oh, right. Well, go then. Go on. And don't bother coming back. You don't mean that. Look, when has violence ever solved anything, eh? Look, you're angry and you're upset, and I understand that, but you're still my brother. And I don't want you to fall out with me. Yeah, Frankie would look after us, you know. And he'd, uh, he'd fight. He'd make sure we never went short of a few bob. But he, he did it his way, and you know that. But he was a robber, wasn't he? And a bully. Sometimes he was a bully. And people, you know, decent people, they were frightened of him, and he loved it. I've always tried to uh, sort things out by working for a living, you know, doing something like that. And I know it's not always been the way. It's, uh, I've done things I haven't been proud of, but it's been against the grain. But it's not been my way, Jimmy. Yeah, sure, we could jump on Goblin one like, you know, knock seven bells out of him, kill him even. But it's not my way, Jimmy. Violence only leads to violence, that's why you're here. Just let go, will you? We're going to the shops, do you want anything? Yeah, hey, you can get us a couple of grand if you're passing the building society. Okay, anything else? Packet of razor blades. Right, you are. Don't worry, I'll take it out of the couple of grand. Yeah. Oh, I hope that isn't something to delay me. There's only one way to find out, isn't he? Sergeant Richardson, CID. Come in. It's the police, for you. They've been next door. Sergeant Richardson, CID.
get an interview with a bar and a salty call at justice. Fortunately, justice has nothing to do with me. That's up to 12 good men and your local magistrate. I'll tell you what, I'm quite looking forward to it going to court. I mean, it's just stupid, isn't it? Uh, it probably won't get that far. Oh, so it's just a big waste of time all round, isn't it? Such is the nature of the job, sir. Thanks for the tea. What tea? Exactly, sir. This is just a big gain to you, isn't it? I've got five grand borrowed and I'm paying incest on it. Instead of wasting time all round, why don't you just go down to the shop, kick them parasites out and let me get on with me business? Now, well, that's a decision for people much higher and mightier than me, sir. We'll have to see what they think about homeless people being attacked by a violent assailant. Hey, the shopless, not homeless. You tell them I am mightier people that I'm sick of waiting round while people are taking the... while people are messing me about, you know. We'll let you know in due course what action will be taken on your statement, sir. Bye. Bye. Well? You're not going to believe this. Them squatters, they've only got the busies on me, haven't they? Why? What have you done? What I was trying to do was get them out the shop so I could get on with the job that I've been paid to do. So they get the busies on me and plodding theirs on their side. It's mad. Yeah, well, that's your side, isn't it? It's my side, Mum. It's exactly what happened. So why would the police question you and not them? You've brought too many police into my house. When's it going to end? Hey, don't start having a go at me. I'm in the right. Oh, you're always in the right as far as the police are concerned, aren't you? Don't come that with me. Not with that shower you're hanging around with. You what? This holier-than-thou attitude you've got. And you well into Billy Corkle and all his dodgy family. I mean, when our demon got killed, ma'am, I didn't go round shouting my mouth off about revenge, did I? Not like Billy and Jimmy. Billy's been trying to calm Jimmy down, and you know it. Oh, why, yeah. And he's made a brilliant job of that, hasn't he? Jimmy beaten up in an hospital, and we all know what a mess he didn't make of the other fella. Another Cork Hill loser. And that's what you're going to be, ma'am, when you marry Billy. Another Cork Hill loser. And I'll tell you something else. You better keep the wedding day a secret, because God and his mates might just turn up and finish the job off. Look, will you not talk about them like this? And don't mention our Damon's name in the same breath as Jimmy Corkhill. Why not? I mean, you're going to be one of their family soon, aren't you? Hey. I'm going out. Look, Mrs Harper, don't tell me you don't know where she is. You must do. Have a right to know, you know. Hello? Hello? Had a visit from Plod, a Plodette, about the squatters. Yeah. It's trying to get me done, you know, and it's them committing the crime. It's unbelievable. For once I'm in the right and it's trying to get me done. And I've just had a round with me ma. Oh, I tell you, I'm sorry, yeah. I know you've got your own problems and I, I just wanted somebody to have a go at, you know. I know the feeling. How's things? She's going to have to tell me one way or another whether Danny's father is Martin Howes or not. We split up for a short while, and he was still hanging around, wasn't he? Jonathan knows. It all just fits. So what are you going to do? I'm going to make Sue admit it, and then I'm going to kill him. Oh, I'll tell you, not you as well. It's this cat in a waff face next door, and now here. You can get locked up just for talking like that, you know. What would you do? Well, I'd think long and hard about it. I've talked about it. <laughs> I keep thinking, they all knew all that time, and there's me making a pillock of myself, thinking I'm his father. What else can I do? Well, you can't kill him, can you? You just watch me. Teddy, I'm not saying he couldn't do it. I'm saying you can't do it. Why not? Well, Jimmy Corkle went out to do something similar, didn't he? And nearly ended up stabbed himself. Teddy, have you thought about Danny and all of this? Of course I've thought about him. Yeah, through blind age, you'll have Teddy. You go out and get that Martin fella, right? You'll get banged up. And then he's going to lose two dads, isn't he? Only one. I'm not his dad, remember? So? So you may not be his natural father, so what? <laughs> exactly. I'm his unnatural father. I'm going to kill this Martin fella. I don't care what happens to me. He's messed the rest of my life up, and it can't be put right. Terry, you could mess it up even more, though, couldn't you? Just calm down, eh? Think about what's best for Danny. Hey, I know you. I've seen you kick off on people for far less than this, so who are you to tell me? I'm your mate, Terry. And I don't want to be visiting you at Walton Jail once a month, do I? 
Think about it. Think about talking to Sue. Think about how she's feeling, though. I mean, Terry, it's not totally beyond repair now, you know. You can heal her. We all do. Anyway, look here. Uh, I'm gonna get my head together. And, uh, go and apologise to me, man. Do us a favour. Take it easy. Hey. A copper came here, why? Well, something to do with Barry attacking these squatters in the shop. A copper comes here to see him about attacking someone and he gets on to you about me and our Jimmy. Well, no, he wasn't quite like that. I mean, I should have listened to him before I was critical. He's got some cheek he has. Can we just leave it, please? I don't want to postpone the wedding. And I don't want to be looking over my shoulder wondering who's going to be turning up. I want it to be a happy occasion. So do I, and it will be. Have we ever, man? I think you've said enough. What's this about having busies around here and upsetting your mum? It's my business. Well, I think my business and your business are too close for comfort. I mean, supposing Rod had been home and there's a copper here, just keep them away, all right? Mum, can I have a word with you in private? Don't please? ignore me when I'm talking to you, yeah? Look, will you just shut up, Billy? I want to have a word with me, mum, not you. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? The trouble you've caused. I haven't caused any trouble. I'm in the right. Well, it makes a change. Look! Then. Will you just leave it, the pair of you? I came round to apologise, Mum. All right. Hi, Dad. Hello, Dad. Hi, kids. Well? Well, what? The room. What about the room? I haven't stopped cleaning since you went to school. No. What? You didn't notice? Yeah, it does look nice. Look, you know this letter I got? Looks nice. I've worked really hard. Well done, Dad. Where's your camera? Hope your mother's more appreciative. Well, I've got this job, you see, for the summer. Dad, where's your camera? We're going to take some pictures of the room before we start to clean it up. Mr Molyneux thinks it's a great idea. Top drawer, the sideboard. What job, love? In a hotel for the summer. I told you about it. There is a film in this, isn't there? Yeah, from Christmas. Didn't you get that developed? Still about ten pictures left on it. Twelve. Right, I'm off. No, you're not. You're going to get changed first. Oh, Dad! You don't have to do the washing. Go on, go and get changed. So I'll be going away on a two-week course. Now, just slow down a minute and start at the beginning. I told you I was looking for a job for the summer. Yeah, you did mention something. Well, anyway, I've had this interview at a company which owns six hotels, and they've said yeah. they'll take me on at one of them. But what's this about going on a course? Well, they have this hotel in Blackpool where all the new staff train for two weeks before going to the hotel to do the job. But what exactly is the job? Well, I'll start off being a chambermaid and then they'll put me where I'm best suited. Two weeks on a course learning how to make beds. That doesn't seem nice. There's more to it than just making beds. Great news, though, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is, yeah. Two weeks in Blackpool on your own. Did your mother know about it? Well, not yet. It'll be a nice surprise for her. And I'll be earning some money. Well, that'll come in handy. Anyway, I'll have to get on with the tea. If I had my carrots, do I have to eat my sprouts? Well, you can eat them all. There's not that much there, son. Mum doesn't make me veg. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. Look, I'm doing it for your own good, you know. Come on, now, set a good example for your sister. You're earlier than I expected. I just sorting this out today. Really only begins tomorrow. God, they're doing half waste some time. Hiya, kids. You have a good day? Dad made us eat veg. <gasps> He's one bad man. You force veg down these kids' throats. Well, they tell me you don't cook veg for them. And now, what they say and what happens may not be exactly the same. Ready to go, then? Look, it's not finished eating yet. Yes, we have more. <laughs> so what's the case, then? I can't tell you that. Why not? Because I'm sworn to secrecy. The judge was very keen on secrecy. Josie said, not a word to anyone on this case. Are you really sending people to jail, Mum? Only the bad men like your dad who makes kids eat veg. The veg is good for you, right? In years to come, you'll regret eating all that junk food. It does really heavy at times, isn't he? Like all the time. Come on, go and get your things. Jeremy, you might as well leave your toys for tomorrow. You're not bringing them kids up, right? These kids are healthy. They look great, they're well-dressed, well-fed, and they're happy. And I only take criticism from husbands who haven't walked out to me. You understand that, Nick? 
say that as if I didn't have a reason to leave you. You don't want to go through it all again, do you? I certainly don't. It was your decision. Oh, did you get the taxi sorted out? Yeah, I'm working nights. Oh, good. I do appreciate you having let me know. When do I get any sleep? Kids, kiss Daddy goodbye. You'll be seeing him again tomorrow. Bye, Dad. Yes, What's the case again? I can't tell you. Bye. Yeah, bye. See you tomorrow. Hello. What do you think of her? It's a bit mucky. All right. What have you thrown in here? You two cross over the rubbish to the other side while I take some photos. Oh, well, no, then. then. Yeah, you sit down here, then. All right, do you want to go first? Disgusting. Say cheese. Now for a sample of the water. Doctor say? That you need looking after. You've got high temperature. And if it gets any worse, I've got to ring Dr. O'Rourke. Do you want anything else? No, thanks. I've rang the council. Oh, you didn't. I did, yeah. Hey, you were lucky your mates were there to drag you out and bring you home. Some of the kids might drown if nothing was done about that river. Did you tell them your name? Oh, well, yeah. I was badging off your phone and Mr. Molyneux. I feel a right to you now. I'll get your mum to write him a note when she comes in. She's better at apologising than I am. What exactly did you say to him? Oh, it's all right. Don't worry. I was a little hard on him, but he understood. Dad, I'm wrecked. Oh, it's all right. I just had a bit of a go on him for letting kids play near open water and that. But it was my fault. I didn't listen to you. I was going on about the housework and that. I shouldn't have let you go. Twelve? And you fell in. I'll never be able to look Steve in the eye again. He's very concerned about you. What did he say? He asked exactly how you were, sent you his best wishes, and said you were an excellent student. Did he? Yeah. And said all the class will soon be signed your get-well-soon card. Do you mean you're not fell in the river? Well, he must have to send you a get-well-soon card. Oh, Dad, I'm destroyed. You'll be all right. But it's more than safe for me camera. Sorry you couldn't find it. It's all right, love. Now, what do you fancy for your tea? I'm not really hungry. My tummy aches and my chest hurts a bit. You've got to eat something, love. I'm all right. Your eyes hurt you? 
after a bit sore. Pretty mild sure he's not still here. Could have got a second opinion. Be all right. That water was rotten now. I think I need to go to the toilet. Uh, no, keep warm. Right. You look after yourself. Do you need any help? No. I think I'm going to be sick again. Hey, don't go in yet. Why not? I want to talk to you. We both don't get struck dumb as soon as we walk through the door, you know. <sighs> All right, what's the problem? You know what the problem is. Oh, well, how can you say that? It's a job I want to do. Well, I think you're stupid packing in school to be a chambermaid. Well, that's just for starters. They'll train me to be a receptionist and all that. But I think you can do better than that. You sound just like me, Dad. Have you told him yet? Yeah. Only that it's a summer job. And when are you going to tell him it's permanent and you're jacking in school, eh? When the time's right. God, I don't see why you're so bothered. What do you mean? Look, it's my decision whether I stay on the course or not. And I've decided to get a job. I care because I care about you, Sammy. I love you. Oh, don't say that. Why not? Whether I say it out loud or not, you know it's the truth. I know what's best for you. I know being a chambermaid isn't. Oh, well, that's very good of you, thanks. Hey, listen, I don't want to fall out over it. Then just let me make my own decisions by myself. When does the course start, then? In a month's time. I suppose it'll be mixed. <laughs> you do sound like me, Dad. Do they have male chambermaids? No. But they have trainee porters and chefs and all that caper, don't they? Could be interesting. I won't see you for weeks. It'll fly by. Not for me, it won't. You're jealous, aren't you? What? Well, that is what this is all about. You don't want me to go to Blackpool for two weeks, do you? Well, all right, I might be a bit jealous. But it's only because I think so much about you. Then why didn't you just say that instead of acting like a careers officer? What was I supposed to do? Say, Sammy, please don't go to Blackpool and take this job because my nerves are gone in case you get off with someone else. That's exactly what I wanted just to say, yeah? Well, I've said it now, haven't I? Well, I enjoyed it so much the first time, Owen. I wouldn't mind hearing you say it again. But, hey, I'll be going off my head thinking about you every day. Good. I'll be thinking about you thinking about me. Well, then, I'll just have to go out, won't I? For the two weeks and take my mind off it. What do you mean? Well, you know, go out. A few clubs, a few pubs, you know, a few beers. Anything just to take my mind off what you'll be getting up to in Blackpool. Look, I'll be working most of the time. It's not a two-week holiday, you know. Oh, are well, yeah. Blackpool in the middle of the summer. Who are you trying to kid? You're going to have a ball. Look, the hotel will be full. We'll be dead busy. I mean, they call it training, but it's more like cheap labour. She's a good-looking young woman, isn't she? And he's a good-looking young man, the ideal couple. Mm, I guess. Definitely. I'm just off to the shops. Do you want a lift? No, you're all right. It's a nice day and you're enjoying the gardening. I'm doing the gardening. Doesn't mean to say I'm enjoying it, does it? Well, so I don't mind walking. Please yourself. Have you heard how young Katie is? No. It won't be long before our Claire's roaming around. I'm going to be out of my mind worrying about her. Well, she won't be roaming very far, I'll see to that. You've had enough worries. I'm sure you don't want a lift, love? Yeah, I'm positive. Even so, you know, I don't mind admitting I've been thinking about having driving lessons. What do you think? Well, I think it's a great idea. Just don't ask me to teach it, that's all. Oh, thanks very much. You know what I mean? I think driving lessons have broken up more marriages than anything, you know that? <laughs> well, I do think adultery, wife-beating, gambling and drinking might just have the edge. Yeah, maybe, but you go to a good driving school. I think it's a great idea, mind you. What? Well, as we're not married, then unlikely to be in the near future, I think it might be safe enough for me to teach you. I didn't say I didn't want to marry you. I just think this isn't the right time. Well, you must think the same, don't you? A good wedding is what's needed to sort things out once and for all. Can we wait, please? I'm going to have to, aren't I? I just want everything to be right. It will be. It will be. Mm. Sorry. Oh, hi, love. Uh, had a nice day. Not so bad. Does anyone want a coffee? No, uh, not for me. I'm off to the shops. I'll have a coffee, thanks, love you. See you later. See you, so long. Take it the wedding's back on, then? No, uh, not for the time being, at least. Sheila thinks we should wait for quieter times, you know. Oh, get it if we ever get quieter times. And we'll have to wait for Jimmy to be out of hospital or jail if you want him to be best man. That'll soon be the right time. I'll make sure of that, I think. 
Look, I know how much you want to marry her, and I can't say I want you to. But, well, I'm sorry if I'm one of the reasons that she's put it off. Thanks for that. I think the big problem is our Jimmy diving into the deep end and then falling flat. God knows what would have happened if he managed to damage God, no. It's got to stop, Dad. I know, I've told your Uncle Jimmy, but Barry keeps staring up with Sheila. God, he's bad news, you know, Trace. Who? Jimmy or Barry? Both of them, but you're well shot at Barry, you know that. That might be. How do you mean? Well, it's up to me if I'm well shot of him or if I go back with him. It's my decision. OK, I know what you're saying, yeah. What's like you and Sheila? We might not like what each of us does, but we just have to respect each other's decisions. Well, let's hope we both make the right decisions then, eh? Yeah. Cheers, love. Used to acquire the future, eh? It's still a trace of that smell. Oh, not again. I like this wallpaper. Yeah, it'll do for the time being. Ooh, don't like the sound of that. How do you mean? It seems like we'll just be settled in when you want the place redecorated. Don't worry, we'll get people in. There won't be any money left to get people in. Oh, Max, it's such a tiny house. It's not going to cost much to make it look nice. It's not as if we're talking about the house in Hoylake. £80,000? Well overpriced on the current market. <sighs> Very impressive, though. <laughs> not at £80,000. We shouldn't have gone to see it. Makes this place look like a rabbit hutch. Oh, well, next time. About 15 years when I get my kids off my hands. <laughs> Why so long? They'll have left school well before that. And what about university? Got to see them through that as well. Why? Because they're my kids. There's no point in struggling for a private education and then abandoning them when it's university time. I want to see the full benefit of my investment. Why can't Susanna get a job instead of making coffee mornings a full-time career? Well, she should be paying for the kids as well as you. I'll need a new telephone line for the fax. You'll remind me about that, will you? Hey, I'm not your secretary. You did tell Susanna how much mortgage you have to pay now, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, I've told her. And? What did she say? You can hardly expect her to be sympathetic, can we? I'd just be happy if she'd be a bit realistic. She swans about in that big house all day without a care in the world. She's still very bitter, Patricia. It's understandable. Why do you always take her side? I don't. I left her for you, didn't I? Yeah, but she's still like a millstone round our necks. It's so unfair. Oh, let's not talk about her. We've got a new house with enough space for Thomas and Margaret. Let's just enjoy it, shall we? A new wallpaper reasonably soon. Oh, I want this to be our house, our home. All right. Let's see what I can do. How's it going? So-so. Kids been all right? Yeah, great. Gemma's having a sleep. I gave them an early yeah. tea. And she likes broccoli. Mm, does she now? But I don't. Oh, I just said to try it, that's all. And Dad did it again. Tomorrow he's going to give us spinach. <gasps> no, well, I like spinach, so why shouldn't your kids like spinach? It's nice to see everyone getting on. I had steak and all the trimmings for lunch, courtesy the High Court. Courtesy of tax and maintenance payers like myself. So what's the case, then? It's very interesting. In what way, love? Interesting because it's something I've only read about. I never thought these people actually existed. What sort of people? I've probably said too much already, Mick. I don't want to get done for contempt of court. Hey, look, who am I going to tell if you tell me? It's not that. It's a matter of conscience. Conscience? You? Don't you get so high and mighty. What's the chance you're picking the kids up in the morning? Honey, Josie, I'm shattered. I've been driving half the night. It's a real drag getting them over your first thin. Why can't we stay? Because I've got a work night. And who'd mind you? Mum, she can stay as well. Well, that's a bit awkward, son. I'll think about it. I haven't asked you yet. What a tough landlord. Tell you what, though. What? If I do stop, you won't force me to eat spinach. Where is he? Who? Who? Who the only thing I'm talking about? I'm talking about Martin now. Where is he, eh? I don't know, Terry. He's gone. And please let me go. <laughs> Do you know what you've done to me, eh? Look at me. I've never been so hurt, so humiliated, so let down. Tell me where he is, cos I'm going to kill him. Oh, no, Terry. I don't know where he's gone. Believe me, I don't ever want to see him again. I <laughs> believe you, you lying bitch. Look at me. Look what you've done to me. I thought we were going to be so happy. I'd like you to settle down with all my life, and then you do that to me. I should kill you. I should, but I'm not going to, cos we want to kill him instead. Him, that's somewhere out there laughing at me. He's not laughing at you, Terry, because he doesn't know about Daniel. As far as he's concerned, you're the father. I was wrong. 
But it was before we were married. I was all mixed up and he just came out of the past. I didn't know what I wanted then, but in the end I wanted you. I still do, Terry. Please let me go. He doesn't know. Is all right? Yes, yes, I think I've just got to be done about these lorries. Hey, you! Why don't you watch where you're going? How many times you got to be told you can't get through here? On your way! Where do you think he was going to? That's a new development, the shops. A lot of the drivers think that this is a shortcut. Leo, you know better than to dash across a road like that. Are you are not anymore, you don't. We'll have to get the council to put a sign up, no through road or something. Good idea. Oh, look, uh, this is Josie, by the way. Oh, sorry. Hi. Hiya. I'm Josie Johnson, not Josie, by the way. Ah, <laughs> uh, you must be mixed. Estranged wife. Oh, pleased to meet you. Sheila. <laughs> I must look that up. Estranged. All right. Yeah, just a lorry gave the lot a scare, that's all. Gave us all a scare. Yeah, let's get them in and get them sorted out, see. See you later. See you now. See you now. So, is uh, Dan Nick's wife done? Estranged. She looks all right to me. <laughs> They're separated. I'm going to get the tea on. They've postponed the wedding. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. Hey, uh, listen, I'm going to a wedding on Saturday. Uh, open St. Helens, Brian Dean's, is like. Mm, is he the fellow you used to play football with? Yeah, that's him, yeah. It should be a good deal, like. Do you fancy coming? I don't think that would be a good idea. Well, uh, what are you doing tonight? Why? Well, you know, I'd like to talk to you. He's not really suitable, and neither's there, like, so I thought we'd go out somewhere for a nice, quiet drink, you know? I don't think that would be a good idea, either. I've said what there is to say. Can't we just make the brick a clean one? Well, as clean as possible when your mother's marrying me father. Well, look, you can't just finish it like this. It's finished, though. It's just that you won't accept it. Look, maybe when you move your stuff out of me flat, then it'll get through to you. I've got you all wrong, haven't I? All right, I'll go round and I'll get my stuff out the flat. And you go your own way. And you get your salon and all that, eh? But just remember, it's the cost of an innocent life. All right, Tracy. Margaret, I have the bedroom with the mark on the ceiling. I wonder what caused that. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps kids missing about 4.6 metres. I like the front bedroom. <laughs> Bedroom's a bedroom, isn't it? Until we get the furniture in. Who needs furniture? 4.5. What's your sense of adventure got? Home, where it should be. We haven't even got curtains. It wasn't like this before we were married, was it? Cars, hotel bedrooms. We'd have given anything for an empty house at times. You're telling me the magic's gone now, after just one year of marriage? Mm -hmm. There were no curtains in the car. Didn't bother you then. Let's see if we can steam some of these windows up. You keep your mind on the job. <laughs> You've come to measure up. Ah, oh, bloody hell, Sally, what's been going on? I'll ask me dinner. I want to batter Martin, but I can't. Did you find Sue? Yeah, but she doesn't know where he is. So what are you going to do now? I don't know. He doesn't know. Do you know? No, he doesn't know he's Danny's father. He thinks I am. I want to hit someone. I know how you feel. Just been told to Tracy. Not good. Could say that. Listen, any chance of keeping him down here tonight? Yeah, if you want. I'm not very good company, though. 
Well, we could go out for a bevy. I've got a few, Bob. No, I'd better stay off the air. I can't trust myself. You go if you want. Well, I've got to clean the gear out the flat. But I tell you what, I'll bring a few cans back, eh? Are you hungry? I'm all right. You look awful, you know. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, that's what friends are for, isn't it? Do you want Indian or Chinese? I'll bring it back. Teddy, we've got to get ourselves sorted out, all right? <laughs> What's amusing you? To cut off, to remove, to alienate. This is the best one. To divert from original use of possessor. What are you talking about? Estranged. Oh, I see. Look, uh, I'm going to get a couple of hours sleep, so the kids are all yours. The kids are all yours as well, Mick. What are you saying? Can't you just make the effort, Josie? Sure I can. It's just that this case I'm on is so serious, I've got to be a little flippant at home to relieve the tension. What? You're flippant all the time. You haven't seen me in court. Hey, look, life's going to get very difficult around here over the next few days if you don't tell me what this case is all about. Then life's going to be very difficult. Josie! Josie what? I'm not telling you, Mick, and that's that. I think you're being very childish. I'm being very childish. You're the one who's wet in his trousers, desperate to find out what's going on. Hey, don't talk to me like that. And don't you talk to me like that. You're not my possessor anymore. We are estranged. Ah, it's great being back together again. Glad you think so. Yeah, don't get so used to it, son. Isn't it time you went to bed? It's only half past four in the afternoon. I'm talking to your father. You send your dad to bed. Without a story. Look, I'm going to bed. Don't let me oversleep. I want to be on the road by eight. And don't you be lying awake wondering what case I'm on. Feel any worse, love? The bear. I still feel sick. Hello. Hello, Danny. Thanks for ringing back, mate. Yeah, I was just wondering, you know, you said you look out for me in your place. Any jobs? No? All right, mate, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for ringing, mate. See ya. Not doing that. No, love. Just as well what you've been to say. Thanks for the tea, Mr. Rogers. I've never had spaghetti bolognese like that before. You enjoyed it then? Hey, he said thanks and he never tasted like that before. He didn't say he liked it. Let the lad speak for himself. No, I liked it, honest. I'm a flying pig. You haven't even tasted yours yet. Spaghetti bolognese, Chinese style. Who needs to taste it? I just wants it to be a bit different, that's all. Oh, you're still not feeling too well, Katie. Ah, uh, she's being very brave. Dad. Hey, Mr. Mull, you knows how brave she's being. Shut up, you. I'll behave to pair of you. And will you be all right if I nip down for a prescription? Of course we are. You're not very well, are you, mate? I would. Fancy nipping down the chemist with me. Save me parking. Yeah, sure. Thanks, mate. See you. See you later. See you, Casey. It's got a better stock garden. Exactly. There's not much choice, is there? No. One's awful. One's dreadful. Aha, uh -huh, but it's a buyer's market. And with two up for sale, I reckon I'll get the dreadful one. Don't buy three or four grand. <laughs> it's not that dreadful. No. It just needs a little woman's touch. Oh, yeah. Who might that be? Your neighbours, I think. Yeah, they arrived before me and Sammy got here. How long have you gone on this course to Blackpool? Well, about a month, I think. I think she's in for a shock, you know. Probably hard than what she thinks. I know. It'll be a lot different from school. I told her she's staff packing schooling. No, she's not, is she? It's only a temporary summer job. Oh, yeah, um, I hope Katie gets better soon. She looks really sick, doesn't she? It's not like her to be laid up. I've never seen her like this before. The locum reckons it's just probably a virus that'll pass. But you're right. She does look bad. I just hope this prescription works. Oh, must be his dad. I'm sure I can get him down a couple of grand. Sure you can. Then you can spend the rest of the summer tidying the garden. Terrific. It's going to be wonderful. Let's go out for a celebratory meal tonight. Somewhere really nice. Margaret can look after Thomas. Mm, why not? Maybe two and a half grand. God, what are we down to here? I... Something has got to be done.
Hello, Don. It's Barry Grant here. Yeah. Hey, I want to borrow your chainsaw tomorrow morning. First thing. Yeah? All right. See you, mate. A moose struggles to stay alive next after falling into a freezing Alaskan river, awaiting animal rescue. She's no better. Yeah, will you phone him then? What's the matter with you? Nothing's just a bit early, that's all. You can phone him. Well, he said you could phone him direct at home over there, Sammy. Katie's just as serious, if not more so. Yeah, well, I'll go and see to Katie then. You phone the doctor, eh? Any good? So, so. See you later. Yeah. Lizzie's will nick you if they see you with that, you know. Telly, this is only a two of the trade. Yeah. But you're not supposed to take squatters' heads off, are you? Hang on. I'm coming with you. Yeah, Gemma fell asleep soon after you went to work. Did you have a good night? I was a bit slow. But I got to run to Blackpool. That made a few bob. Blackpool? Somebody gone on their holidays? I was a family that missed the train. The kids were disappointed and crying, and the mum and dad were blaming each other for being late. Sounds familiar. Yeah. <clears throat> and you better be on your way. Mm. I suppose so. Come on, Leo, get dressed. I don't know my shirt is. Where'd you take it off? The bathroom is supposed to That's where it'll be. I still got a clean one to put on. He's only worn that one a day. Come on. Gemma's still asleep then? Yeah. She'll be away for another three hours, yeah. She woke up at about nine to one last night. Watched a film. I don't like her watching these late films, you know. Oh, but I could use a few hours sleep. I'm not gonna... Get to it then. Yeah, right. Want to see you later? You mind too. Depends on how lucky you are. What with? You being here or not? Sleeping here last night? Yeah, we don't mind, do you? 
Seems silly so can you the bed empty. No, I don't mind. Memories. Are you going to be late? The judge said he wouldn't start without me. Is the bed still warm? Yeah. It smells of your perfume. Something to keep you company, Mick. Bye, Joss. Bye. Ready, Dr. Bob? Yeah. Some damage as well, sir. Think you'll be able to salvage anything? Some of it, yeah. Good. Oh, thanks. Mind you, it's gonna cost me a few, Bob. What are you going to? Well, I'm gonna have to deal with it, aren't I? It's five grand down the swanny otherwise, isn't it? Well, what about the door? I can sort that. Yeah, but what if they come back? Well, I'll be here waiting, won't I? I'm gonna move in here, Terry. Oh, wait, you can't move in here. Why not? I mean, I've got to put as many hours in as I can, Terry, to make me money back. Stacey's kicked me out, so I'm not exactly flavour of the month next door. You can move in with me till Jonathan comes back from London. No, you're all right, sir. I mean, you've got enough of your own problems, haven't you, to sort out? And I don't want to get in your way. Listen, I, uh, I do appreciate you coming down this morning. Ah, it's all right. It's helped me take my mind off things, didn't it? Anything else I can do? Yeah, I'll tell you what, you can toss me gear in for us if you like. Don't make a start on this. Oh, you can't stay here, yeah? I tell you, I'll be working most of the time, won't I? Look, how are you feeling? Same. Yeah, well, we've been down before. Not like this, though, have we? Sally, you took a chainsaw for me. Find out what it takes for you. <laughs> if only it was so easy. Listen, you can't go on like this. You've got to get back with the best of us. And you're recommending this? Come back here in two weeks' time, you'll see the finished product. If I don't do it for myself, no one's going to do it for me. And if you don't pull yourself out the pits, no one's going to do it for you either. You've never really been hurt, have you, Barry? You've done it to a few people yourself, but you've never had that gut twisting experience I've had, have you? I just had a child of mine murdered before I had the chance to see the light of day, Terry. So I know a little of what you're feeling. Yeah. But you never got to see that child, did you? You never got to play with it and see it respond to you as if you were the father. And then be told you're not the father. At least the baby's still alive, Terry. No matter who the father is, it's gonna have its chance. I don't even know whether a man was a boy or a girl, whether it looked like me, whether it was gonna add up to being anything. Sue's alive. Daniel's alive. Terry, you're alive. You can still get something out of it, all of you. You can have kids. I can't. Terry! Sammy, will you get down here? All right. I've told you, Dad, I'm coming down now. If you want to think of your feeling, you just tell your dad, all right? What's going on? I want to stay down here. Doctor's on his way. All right. Come on, I'm going to be late. There's no need to keep going on and on, you know. Oh, Mr. Cheeky. Are you sure you're fit to be left? Of course we are. Aren't we, love? Look, you won't forget to take the washing out of the machine, will you? I've left you a lift for the shop, love. You know which butcher we use, don't you? Yeah, and which fruit and veg shop. I know, I know. You'll be all right with that casserole. I know what needs to be done. Why don't you just leave me to do it? I'm just making sure you're all right. Well, I've got enough to fill me day if that's what you're worried about. All right, it's not my fault you're unemployed. I know, it's all my fault. Oh, love, I didn't mean that. It's nobody's fault. You should go back to bed, you know. It's boring. Stay down here and watch the telly. You don't look well, you know. Doctor will be here in a minute. OK. I'm going to be late. I'll have to go. You keep warm. Take care. And you. Don't you be so touchy, you. Have a good day. Bye, Mum. Bye, love. Don't you be late now. You hear what your mum said? It's all right. I haven't got a lesson till 11. Seems a strange waiting on a school. 
Not really. Everything's changed since your days, you know. Thanks very much. Here's Dr. O'Rourke. Hi. Uh, I must I'll see you later. Bye. Now then, Katie. What's this I've been hearing from my colleague? Let's see what it's all about. Morning. Morning, Terry. Are you all right? I've just been helping Barry get into the shop. Mm. Does that mean he's in deeper trouble now? Nah, the squatters have gone. Are oh, you all right? Well, yeah, yeah. Sure. Do you want to come in for a cup of tea? No, no thanks. Things to do. What things? Things in the house. Are you looking after yourself properly? I'm just tired. Are you eating properly? I'm not hungry. Should I cook you a dinner? Will you eat that? Look, Terry, I've got the day off. Why didn't you come in? Have a cup of tea. It's all right, Sheila. I I'm all right, honest. OK. But I'll cook you dinner and bring it round. Ready for school. Switch that thing off. All right, so getting at me. Somebody's got to. You wouldn't do anything for yourself. You wouldn't be getting kicked out of this race. Yeah, well, it's all right, because I'm leaving anyway. So Owen was right, was he? What do you mean? He let a slip that you're packing in school and his job was a permanent one. He tried to cover it up quickly, but I thought something was going on. Anyway, you can put all thoughts like that right out of your head. I'm not having my daughter packing an education for some skivvy job in a hotel. Oh, well, just what you intend having your daughter do, eh? Getting a decent education and a decent job. And what's a decent job? Teaching. Working in a bank building society or something like that. Oh, and don't I get a say in the matter, like? I just want what's best for you. I think I'm the best judge of that. Not if you're packing your education for a daft job. Oh, yeah, well, if that's what you think, carry on, but it's what I'm going to do. Oh, are you now? Yes, I am. It's all sorted. Well, you can unsort it because you're staying on at school. <sighs> Look, Dad, you can't make me. You'll do as you're told until you're 18. Well, that's stupid talking like that. I'll be 18 in less than a year. I've made up my mind now. You're too young to make your mind up. I'm old enough to do all sorts of things, and I'm certainly old enough to know that I don't want to work in a boring bank or building society or be a boring teacher. And I'm old enough to sleep with Owen if I want to. Yeah, you were wrong about that and all. Look, I'll see you later. I've come to talk to him, but... Something's gonna have to be done about you two. You can't keep tearing each other apart like this. Yeah, but what can I do? I can't go back and put things right. Well, he still loves you. He still loves Daniel. Try talking to him. I'm sure you can sort it out between yourselves. You've got to. But Sheila, the hurt I've caused him... Can be got over. Talk to him. Oh, I don't know. Sue, so, look, at least he knows now. You don't have to live a lie anymore, do you? I mean, some women have to go through the whole of the life without being able to unburden themselves. Believe me, I know. I can't. You can, if you want to. But you don't know. You could never know. It's... <laughs> and, uh... Do you want me to come with you? No. But thanks, Sheila. Terry? Sue? So, what the hell are you doing here? I want us to talk. Talk? We're past talking. It's all been said and done. Now, get out. It makes me sick to see you. But I'm worried about you. Bit late for that, isn't it? Worried about me? Well, that's brilliant, that is, isn't it? You go and wreck me life and then you say you're worried about me. 
All right, then, Terry. Stew in your own self-pity, then. What do you want me to say? What's happened is fact and history. If I could change it, I would. I'd give anything for you to be Daniel's father, but we have to live with it. Obviously, you can live with it a lot easier than me. Well, there's still Daniel to think about, you know. He's got nothing to do with me. But he thinks you're his dad. For the past year, you have been. And you're my husband. I still love you, Terry. I always will. I won't be your husband for much longer. I'm going to see a solicitor and get a divorce. You'll be all right using Jonathan. You work well together, and I know he's discreet. Now, get out! It's good of you to call back again, Doctor. Is it that serious? No, she's about the same as she was when I saw her this morning. I just wanted to keep an eye on her. She should be all right. Her temperature's down a little, but we'll have to keep monitoring it. How are you, Frank? Oh, fine, thanks. Not enjoying being out of work, but I don't think you can give me anything secure, eh? Well, I didn't know you were out of work. I'm sorry to hear that. Nah, not on my own, am I? Well, we're looking for a part-time receptionist at the moment, but I don't think that's quite your style. I did say to Chris I'd do anything, but uh, I'd say your point is not quite me. Well, if not you, um, what about your wife? Would she like the extra hours? Mention it to her. I certainly will, yeah. I'm not enjoying swapping roles with her at the moment, but uh, if she wouldn't mind another job, we could use the extra money. Well, I'm sure if she wanted it, she'd be ideal. In the meantime... Uh... <coughs> you don't smoke, do you? No. <laughs> Keep it that way. Make sure she gets plenty of liquids. If she can hold them down, that is. We don't want her getting dehydrated. OK, Doctor, yeah. And if you must go swimming, try the local bars next time, eh? I will. Thanks for calling again, Doctor. That's no trouble. And I may have solved our receptionist problem. You will mention it to your wife, won't you? I certainly will. Bye, Katie. Bye, Doctor. I wouldn't expect her to get any worse, but if she does, don't hesitate to call me. I won't. Thanks again. And tell your wife I look forward to hearing from her. I will. Bye now. Bye now. Wow. He seems a nice man, doesn't he? Yeah. Do you think I'm more fancy working for him? I don't know. I think they'd get on, though. Now, can I get you anything else? You finished for the day, now? Yeah. I can do it taking there full time. Ah, you'd make a bad lawyer. Why? Because you'd be falling out with everybody if you didn't get your own way. Make you see? I only fall out with you. The rest of the world and me get on fine. So How's Gemma you. been? She's great, aren't you? What are you going to do for the rest of the day? Don't mind Gemma, lay you get some sleep. Very thoughtful of you. I've been doing a bit of thinking this morning. All right. Perhaps you should stay up and have an early night. A work night, remember? You're self-employed. You can have a night off. Where's this going? I'll have a look, love. No work, no pay. No time off, no pleasure. That wouldn't be a good idea. You didn't think that this morning. No, yeah, well, perhaps I was remembering better times. Hey, don't say I didn't give you the chance. Look, it wouldn't be fair on the kids. I don't want us to think that we might be getting back together again. You're so damn sensible. Well, one of us has to be. Oh, juicy. Why the hell did I have to meet someone like you, eh? You say the nicest things. How early at night? As early as you like. Maybe I'll manage a couple of hours in the cab then, eh? No. Mick, stay. Why should I? Because I'll tell you about the case I'm on. Where's this gummy? doing here? I'm all right. I've just been seeing her in a terrible mess. I... Oh, Sue! <laughs> oh, she's really upset. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. Come on, no, come on. You come over to my house. Come on, we can sort this out. Oh. Frank, 
What's wrong? She's taking a turn for the worse, I think, Chris. Oh. oh, look, do you mind? Yes, I just go upstairs. I've just go upstairs. Well, Frank, she's burning up. I know that, Chris. What have you found for the doctor? He's on his way. Mum! Mum! Frank, just phone for an ambulance now. Frank! Frank, will you phone an ambulance, please? It's all right, love. It's all right, love. Mum's here now. State of the place. State of you. How long have I known you? Since me and Barry were at school. Over 20 years, I suppose. A long time. Sometimes like another son. We've got to have a talk. Perhaps for both our sakes. How do you mean? A lot of people worried about you, you know. You can't go on like this. I don't know if I want to go on even. No, you can stop talking like that. You've had a bad shock. But you've got to go on. You've no alternative. I still can't believe it. I wake up and everything's all right for a few seconds and then... and it hits me. It's like being kicked in the head. I mean, how could she do it to me? She's human. You've got to try and forgive her. Forgive her? She's lucky I didn't kill her. Why don't you start thinking positive instead of negative? And what she did was wrong, but there's nobody knows that better than herself. She didn't deliberately set out to have somebody else's baby. She just lost control of the circumstances. It happens to all of us. What time she was lying to me all through the pregnancy, through the wedding, through the last ten months of his life, and to think I even went to antenatal classes with her. Are you being so hard on her because you feel humiliated? I mean, perhaps if you can face that, then you can start to forgive her, start to live a normal life again. I could never forgive her, never. But, you know, she's not unique in what she's done. It happens. I mean, she's got to be punished all her life for, what, one hour of misplaced affection? How do you know it was just that, eh? How do you know she wasn't seeing him all that time? And how, how do you know she hasn't been with other fellas? Come eh? on, come on. You know that isn't true. You're just trying to punish her. What's even more painful, you're trying to punish yourself. Listen, you, you've got to sort yourself out. You've got to snap out of it. Think about having her back. What? Well, think about the possibility. Think about the possibility of having Daniel as your own son. I mean, you've done it since last September, haven't you? I can't, I can't. I loved him and I loved her. He's not mine. I can't have kids, can I? He's absolutely destroyed me, she has. Well, at least you know. At least you know. Sue doesn't have to live a lie anymore. Not like some of us. Terry. I'm going to tell you something I've never told anybody else, ever. And I'm going to tell you because I think it might help. Singapore Zoo next and the emergency treatment room there with Animal Rescue.